Well, everybody, just as we anticipated, Apple just released their brand new M series chip, the M5, and they put it inside of some new hardware, like their new 14 inch MacBook Pro, the M5 iPad Pro, as well as the second generation Vision Pro. This new M5 chip is going to be faster, smarter, more efficient, and it's built all around AI and those AI workflows and workloads to be able to handle everything that you throw at it. So without further ado, let's talk about the M5, what it means, and how it's a drastic change from M4 in these new hardware products. Let's get into it. But now, before we continue, if you do enjoy videos like this one, or if you want to see us get some hands-on time with some of these products in the future, definitely consider subscribing to the channel. But let's first talk about the M5 chip in totality and see exactly if it's going to be worth your hard-earned money and your time. So in our most recent video, I mentioned that I did believe that the transition from M4 to M5 was going to be a much more substantial one than we've seen in the past, similar to how Apple went from the A18 Pro to the A19 Pro, and we got some great GPU and performance upgrades, about a 50% upgrade year over year, which is something that we don't really see anymore when it comes to upgrading your devices year over year. The same thing is true now with the M4. Normally, we get about a 10 to 20% CPU and GPU boost going from the M2 to the M3 and the M3 to the M4, but now this M5 is bringing out a ton more power from an efficiency standpoint and just from a sheer and raw power standpoint as well. So this is gonna be built on the third generation of the three nanometer process, making it sure that it's the most efficient and the most powerful possible, where it gives you the best of both worlds from a power and efficiency standpoint. You also have the next gen GPU, which is gonna be a 10 core GPU, each with its own neural accelerator. And this is gonna be an all AI first design. Now, this isn't really gonna be AI first in terms of like the Apple intelligence chatbot. It's gonna be all things in totality around it, making your day to day that much easier when you are doing your minimal and simple tasks. So ideally, all this is just gonna make everything much quicker, much faster, and more efficient, getting you from point A to point B on whatever task you're doing, whether it's as simple as sending a message with autocorrect or something much larger than that, like huge business workloads. And when I'm talking about that year over year comparison to the M4, we're talking about a 4X peak GPU compute difference compared to the M4. So four times faster and better than M4, and also six times better from an AI compute standpoint compared to the M1, if you wanna compare it all the way back there from 2020. We also have the world's fastest performance core according to Apple with their brand new 10 core total CPU core. We also have a 16 core neural engine, which is faster with Apple intelligence and with LLM now that we can have that built on device. And then also the memory bandwidth. It is much faster than it was before at 153 gigs per second when it comes to everything speaking to each other internally, which compared to the M4 is about 30% faster. And it gives you 32 gigs of unified memory on that M5 chip. And then when it comes to the new terminology that Apple's working with, you know, how Apple likes to throw those marketing terms at us. They're going from this performance per watt to show efficiency to AI per watt, which is going to be Apple's pivot to an on-device AI learning model. So again, everything should be starting to happen a lot more fluidly on these devices as more and more of the Apple intelligence and the AI of all things starts to kind of creep into our lives. And again, they're not trying to be just another chat bot. They're just trying to make your life easier through Apple intelligence. But that's kind of like the rundown of the M5 chip. Now let's talk about the products that these M5 chips are debuting on, starting with my beloved iPad Pro. Now I did mention in the very beginning that Apple released three new products, the iPad Pro, the MacBook Pro, and the Vision Pro second gen. Leave a comment down below of your guess as to which one of these products I personally ordered because I only picked up one of them. You might not be surprised. So again, Apple's touting the new iPad Pro as the biggest generational leap that we've seen year to year in a very long time. As I continue to mention, the M4 to M5 on the iPad Pro is gonna be a substantial leap and one that I'm actually gonna be going towards moving from my M4 to my M5. It took me about three different generations to go from the M1 over to the M4 iPad Pro, but now this time around, I'm actually just upgrading one year later, or I believe 18 months later. So compared to the M4 iPad Pro, it's about 3.5 times faster from an AI interface standpoint, and up to 5.6 times faster compared to the M1 iPad Pro. They did include the brand new N1 chip into the iPad Pro, and this is gonna be the first time I go with the cellular version of the iPad Pro, giving you Wi-Fi 7, Bluetooth 6, and thread capabilities. And speaking of the new data connectivity, Apple's including their new C1X chip, which they debuted on the iPhone 17 lineup for 50% faster cellular and much better battery efficiency. From what people have told me, battery efficiency starts to really dwindle down when you're using data versus Wi-Fi on the iPad. 
So being able to have this now on the iPad Pro to give you much better battery life on the go is gonna be something that I really wanna test out and put it through its paces. But then from a hardware standpoint, everything's gonna remain identical. You still have the tandem OLED display, you have that Ultra Retina XDR display, tandem OLED, 1600 nits of HDR brightness. You do have the ability to still spend an extra $100 for the nano textured option, which is something that some people like or some people don't, but it's a decision that you can make. And it's still 5.1 millimeters in thickness for the 13 inch and 5.4 for the 11 inch. But now to give you some kind of comparisons, if you're coming from the M1, it's about 6.7 times faster at 3D rendering compared to the M1, 6 times faster at video transcoding, 4 times faster at AI image generation, and just it's going to be able to handle a lot more. And one thing that I did notice that for the first time ever for iPads, when you go through the ordering process, it now tells you not only how many cores you're getting from a CPU and GPU standpoint, but also what kind of RAM you're getting on each one. So if you go to order them, the entry level one is going to have 9 core CPU, 10 core GPU, and it's also going to give you 12 gigs of RAM baseline compared to 8 gigs of RAM on the M4, and it'll let you know on every single option. Now, unfortunately, you still have to go all the way to the one terabyte version to get the 16 gigs of RAM and that 10 core CPU. But again, at least you now know and it's stated there from Apple for the first time what you're getting out of your iPad with what you're spending. So I'm super excited for my hands on on this iPad. Definitely get subscribed because we're going to be putting this through the through its paces and kind of understanding what the differences are between the M4 and the M5 because visually they're going to look identical. But let's see if we can actually get some much better workflows moving forward and much better efficiency, especially now that we're getting 16 gigs of RAM, the 10 core CPU, 10 core GPU, the new neural engine, and just everything's going to be much better overall. Now let's talk about the new M5 14 inch MacBook Pro because this one's gonna be just as exciting as iPad Pro. I know that some people in my earlier video said that I didn't show enough excitement for the MacBook Pro because it's just something that I don't personally use. But again, it's getting that same M5 chip, but it's only going to be an M5 version. There's no M5 Pro, M5 Max, or M5 Ultra quite yet. So the lineup is gonna look as follows. It's gonna be the 14 inch M5 and MacBook Pro and then you'll also be able to get the M4 Pro and the M4 Max in that same MacBook Pro lineup on the 14 and 16 inch ones. But currently only the M5 chip is going to be in the 14 inch MacBook Pro. But again, you're getting the same things that I mentioned with the iPad Pro, three and a half times faster AI workflows, 1.6 times faster graphics, a 20% faster CPU, you get 24 hours of battery life, you get 2x faster SSD performance for local LLMs and all your media work. So things are just gonna be snappier and work quicker. And what's nice about this is that this is also going to translate into better workflows when it comes to gaming as well. So you get 3.2x higher frame rates, and they were testing this with Cyberpunk. You get 6.8 times faster 3D rendering with things like Blender, and 7.7 .7 times faster AI video enhancements with something like Topaz. So again, just overall better enhancements, better efficiency, and easier to use when you are working with some of these kind of larger workflows. And the beauty about this is that the baseline model stays at the same price at $1599 with the 512 gigs of storage. One thing that I did wish that for the price that they started off at 24 gigs of RAM, but unfortunately we're still stuck on that 16 gigs of RAM and it is configurable up to 32 gigs of RAM on the M5 MacBook Pro. So something to take note of, but like I said, it's going to stay at $1599 and it'll be available on October 22nd and it's available to pre-order today. And everything else from a harder perspective is going to be exactly the same, same mini LED display, same size battery, but overall, ideally more efficient battery. And then also all the different ports and IO that we've grown to love with the new generations of MacBook Pros. And one thing to kind of circle back on with the iPad Pro, when it comes to video output, it is now going to support 120 hertz video output, which will be the first time ever on an iPad Pro. So do keep that in mind, which also could be an inference at a brand new Pro Display XDR or a brand new studio display that does support 120 hertz, which is something I would absolutely love. And now let's get into the second generation Vision Pro. This thing is going to be a powerhouse when it comes to internal capabilities, and it should be for the price because it's gonna remain at $3,500 as a starting price. But we're getting a brand new M5 chip built directly into this new Vision Pro, and it's gonna be the M5 plus the R1 combo, giving you faster performance, up to 120 hertz refresh rates, and 10% more pixels rendered when you are using it in real time. You also get that 16 core neural engine, which up to two times faster AI for apps, and 50% faster for just overall performance and normal usage. The one new physical update is going to be the new dual knit band, which is better for balance, comfort, and fit. I'm definitely gonna schedule myself a demo to try out the new Vision Pro head strap and the new Vision Pro overall. I don't think I'm gonna be picking one up this year, but if we get enough comments and enough kind of engagement, maybe we will pick one up and see if it's gonna be worth it this time around at $3,500. 
It remains yet to be seen. They did show off some really cool kind of samples through the press release, which is going to be kind of like using it as an extended display, some gaming because it now supports PlayStation VR as well as the PlayStation headsets and the actual handhelds of the PlayStation, which is great to see. So there was a little bit of a pickleball situation, which really looks really cool. Again, the Vision Pro is an outstanding piece of hardware. It's just it's a little too expensive for what it can do. And just the novelty of it all just isn't there for everybody quite yet. People are kind of gravitating towards a smaller form factor, whereas the headset is still a little bit isolating, but albeit still a magnificent piece of hardware and software combination. But again, there is more and more immersive content coming out, like different kind of viewing modes. There's nothing really that you can compare with on the Vision Pro to viewing content at the end of the day. Apple's creating a bunch of immersive shows and immersive kind of experiences on there. So little by little, more is coming out for it. But as of right now, if you're starting, if you're trying to use it as a work tool, there's not that much you can do about it, but they did show some other nice use cases of maybe using it in a medical environment, using it in an aviation environment or in a manufacturing environment where it kind of reads everything around you and kind of teaches you or lets you know what you need to do in those situations, which again, is definitely the future. It's just a matter of how can Apple get this in more people's hands at a cheaper price point. So when it comes to the bigger picture of the M5, going from M4 to M5, maybe it's not for everybody. Again, I'm not saying go out there and spend a ton of money on a brand new iPad Pro if you already have the M4 version. Same thing goes with the MacBook Pro and even the Vision Pro remains yet to be seen how much more of a leap it's gonna be from the M2 to the M5. But the idea here is that every device is now going to be an AI first computer. That is what Apple's pushing here. And you can notice that in their kind of verbiage in their press releases, while they do mention Apple intelligence here and there, they're kind of using Apple intelligence as its own product category. And then AI is kind of like the term that they use as a holistic approach. Apple intelligence is one thing and AI is the whole thing. And that's kind of how I'm interpreting it right now. But the Apple ecosystem is now gonna be unified on the on-device intelligence, with the iPad being for creativity, mobility, and computing. You have the Mac, which is gonna be for productivity and power. And then the Vision Pro for the spatial computing situations that you might wanna get into in the future. So. In my opinion, Apple isn't really chasing the ChatGPTs and the Geminis of the world. They're actually building the hardware backbone for AI that's gonna make your life easier day to day. And that's what I think the ultimate goal of Apple's Apple intelligence and AI push is gonna be. But that'll do it for this video, everybody. That's gonna be a summation of everything that they built. I'm gonna have a video coming out soon on why I want the iPad Pro and why that's, I think, the most important product of all the releases. So definitely stay tuned for that. But leave a comment down below. Are you picking up any of these products? Are you excited for the M5? Is it something you've been wanting? Are you upgrading from the M4? Or maybe you're upgrading from an Intel-based computer, which they're saying the M5 chip is 86 times faster than those in Intel-based MacBooks, which is kind of insane since that's only about the six years away. But that'll do it, everybody. If you made it to the end, unfortunately, leave a dolphin. We're terrible this year, which is kind of annoying, but leave a dolphin in the comments down below so I know you made it to the end. And if you want to watch more videos like this, check out one of these videos right here. And until next time, I'm Fernando. Peace, everyone.